What's going on, Diesel World Reaction? It's your boy Juan Diesel, and as always, I'm back with another video. This one's called Prohibition in the United States National Ban of Alcohol. Let's get started. It was the Noble Experiment. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're taking a look at the history of prohibition in the United States. With the bar lined with the boys and bums, spending their money, debauching their characters, rotting their bodies, and jeopardizing their immortal souls. Prohibition in the United States was the government's attempt to outlaw the production, sale, and shipment of alcohol and intoxicating alcoholic beverages across the country. During the 19th century, various groups pushed for national prohibition. For instance, southern and rural populations believed a liquor ban would curtail the crime they associated with the growing number of immigrants living in American cities. In addition, clashes arose between conflicting religious factions that were separated into the wets and dries. The dries disapproved of drinking and considered saloons and other popular spots of alcohol consumption politically corrupt. Conversely, the wets wanted the state to remain uninvolved in discussions of morality. Support for prohibition grew, and organizations like the Anti-Saloon League lobbied for the case. Many African Americans, women's groups, and progressives were also in favor. The 18th Amendment of the Constitution was the change that established the liquor ban, and it was proposed by the U.S. Senate in 1917. Two years later, it was ratified and then enabled when Congress passed the Volstead Act and it identified the affected liquors and the consequences for the law's violation. Prohibition went into effect on January 16, 1920. The task of enforcing the Volstead Act was given to the federal agency known as the Prohibition Unit, which was later called the Bureau of Prohibition. This agency faced many difficulties, mainly because the urban population strongly opposed the ban and found as many ways around it as possible. For example, the Volstead Act did not expressly forbid the consumption of alcohol. Consequently, people drank alcohol they had stashed prior to the start of Prohibition. In addition, numerous Americans sought liquor prescriptions from their physicians, since the use of alcohol for medicinal purposes was exempted. Other citizens headed to bordering countries to get a drink. Meanwhile, the illegal production and sale of liquor by organized crime developed rapidly. Bootlegging emerged during the Roaring Twenties and saw alcohol smuggled into the United States by criminals. The black market for alcohol soon fell under the control of gangsters like Al Capone and Bugs Moran. In fact, Capone made millions through racketeering and by operating thousands of speakeasies. These establishments illegally sold liquor to patrons and helped popularize jazz music. Under prohibition laws, the personal production of wine and cider made from fruit was permitted. Other individuals tried to find alternatives. Some redistilled industrial alcohols to make them drinkable, and this forced the government to begin poisoning those industrial alcohols to make them undrinkable. Between all the homemade solutions, tens of thousands were poisoned or killed during prohibition after drinking unsuitable alcohol. As the decade progressed, support for prohibition dwindled. While the ban did succeed in reducing alcohol consumption, it also caused a spike in violent criminal activity. This was made especially evident by the St. Valentine's Day Massacre of 1929, when several members of Moran's mob were murdered, allegedly by Capone's gang. The American people also felt prohibition was encroaching on their freedoms. Disillusionment reached an all-time high during the Great Depression, and this eventually led to the development of a repeal movement. The first signs of success came in 1933, when the Senate passed the Blaine Act to instigate the repeal of the 18th Amendment. This was followed by an amendment to the Volstead Act called the Cullen-Harrison Act that permitted the production and sale of particular types of liquor. It would be very difficult, if not impossible, to estimate the benefit that will come to this country from the lesson taught to the coming generation to make it their business to see that no such matter as this is ever again made the subject of federal constitutional law. A few months later, the 21st Amendment was ratified. This repeal of prohibition permitted individual states to implement their own laws regarding alcohol. This caused the black market to suffer a huge loss in profits. However, with America's alcohol brewing industry back in business, the official economy received a much needed boost. 
While some towns continued to impose restrictions following the official repeal, the Prohibition era was most definitely over. Beer. Sparkling. Golden. Pure. Refreshing. 